All right, so uh, you'll recall we introduced Booker T. Washington, uh, and who held the philosophy of uh, separate but equal. Uh, Booker T. Washington, uh, invited to the White House by Theodore Roosevelt, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, um, W.E.B. Du Bois uh, really just sets himself in opposition to Booker T. Washington. Uh, and I think that his environment and his perspective have a lot, or his environment has a lot to do with his perspective, his uh, circumstances being born uh, of mulatto or, or mixed ancestry uh, in the north in Massachusetts. Uh, he experienced few racial problems, uh, and that's part of kind of what builds, I think, your, uh, your philosophies about equality. Uh, if you see, perhaps, uh, the possibilities of equality, uh, as opposed to uh, those born and raised in the South, uh, the African-American uh, people born and raised in the South might have uh, felt uh, from early on, that they were simply inferior uh, because of the cultural experience. But uh, W.E.B. Du Bois uh, seems to uh, have acquired a different experience, especially of being mulatto. Uh, he uh, may not have uh, experienced, um, uh, not, that to, not to say that it would have been half, uh, but that is just to say that he might have been might have might have been passing as white in some circumstances and uh, and and in others uh, being of mixed descent. But in any case, he uh, was in the north in Massachusetts uh, and then moved to Nashville, where in the south he observed the stark cultural difference that we've been alluding to. Uh, he asserted that uh, the common explanation for the low status of African Americans, which he saw in the North and he saw in the South. It wasn't as though equality was just achieved in the North. The discrepancy was there, but um, what Du Bois saw in the North was that when people saw that discrepancy, uh, they explained it as a problem of poverty and education. So African Americans were, uh, were poor and uneducated, and they could solve those problems by working hard but when he moved to Nashville and he, and he observed the culture uh, in the South it was more of a problem of prejudice uh, which was embedded into law uh, Jim Crow laws uh, you know and the, just the legal system how it would um, set out to uh, ad advantage white people and disadvantage uh, black people uh, he could see that this was a systemic prejudice rather than a simple economic uh, power issue, and so therefore he, he saw that it could not be overcome by hard work in the same way that it could have been overcome in the North. Uh, and so he argued vehemently against Booker T. Washington. Uh, Booker T. Washington supported a conciliatory, uh, separate but equal philosophy, which we talked about. Um, instead, Du Bois was committed to what uh, our authors call complete equality. His argument uh, basically boils down to uh, these three things. Du Bois points out three things that Booker T. Washington asks black people to give up. Uh, Booker T. Washington, Du Bois, according to Du Bois, uh, wants to black people to give up political power, demands for civil rights, and higher education, meaning college and so forth. Uh, and Du Bois frames his argument with a very convincing question, one that I think it's uh, really worth asking and thinking about. He says, is it possible and probable that nine millions of men can make effective progress in economic lines if they are deprived of political rights, made servile, and allowed only the most meager chance for developing their exceptional men. Those are those three points 
that um, uh, that Booker T. Washington is asking black people to give up. And without those things, without political rights, being made a servant caste class in society and uh, uh, made only to achieve the lowest levels of education, do is it possible and probable that these black Af Americans can make effective progress in, uh, in economics? Can they overcome that poverty line? And if history, he says, he gives us an answer, not only the question, but the answer. He says, if history and reason give any distinct answer to these questions, and they, I think he's asserting that they do, it is an emphatic no. So he says that clearly history shows that no one can achieve and overcome the poverty that they're in under if they're not given the power to do so, the political rights, the uh, civil rights, and uh, a higher education, opportunity to be educated. Um, I mean, remember the Detroit case that we were talking about where uh, some uh, African American students in, in Detroit were, were uh, they argue, uh, not being uh, given the opportunity to learn how to read and write. Thus, Du Bois argues that equality could never be achieved through Booker T. Washington's model of political reconstruction under a quote unquote separate but equal philosophy. And Du Bois comes around to offer a new commitment. Uh, an emphatic commitment to what he called complete equality. 